HTML is easy if you practice it enough and becomes habit. Let's make a simple HTML document and learn the basics. I'm going to use Blue Griffin here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to go straight to the source. Here is the basic template for every single HTML document. Every website that you visit will have this basic code. It starts with the HTML, opens with the head, inside of the header, um, tags, there is metadata, which is description, uh, hidden like uh, data or description stuff about this, this web page. Um, so there are different types of meta um, tags you can put in, so one for description, one for the purpose, one for the author who made the, the website, who made the page, what the date was, all that all that jargon. Like when you right click on a um, on a file, let's say if I take a screenshot of that, if I right click on this and I get the info, this is all the metadata for that file, for this uh, screenshot file. So you can see the dimensions, the color space, the profile, no alpha channels, when it was published, where it is, when it was created, all that stuff. So that's metadata. Next is the title. So the title is actually, let's save this. I'm going to save it as my index. Index will be the first page that um, a web browser will default to. So when you, when you type in, say, google.com, it actually is opening the index page. It'll be index.php or index.html or some file called index or default. Now, let's open this in Chrome and start having a look at things. So there's no title at the moment. This is where we put the title in here. So this is going to be our... I'm going to Command S or Save. And then I'm going to come over here and refresh and watch. That changes the title of the page. So that's the first thing, changing a title. Inside of the header, you also put style for or rules for your HTML tags. I'm not going to do that yet. First of all, we're going to just put in some basic um, things to show in our body. Our body is where everything is actually displayed. So between our header, we have all the metadata, our links to our external files. That might, we might have style files, CSS files, JavaScript files that will support all the stuff that we're actually showing in the body, which we'll go through later. H1 is a header, heading. It also creates a line. H2s are a smaller heading. H Trees are even smaller. That's Command S, save, and go and have a look. Refresh. So they're the size of the heading. We can uh, set the size of fonts to specific pixels, but um, when when Google looks at your website, it looks for a H1 tag to say, "Hey, that's the heading of the page." I'm going to index that page as you know. If someone searches. Um, Let's say bikes for sale. And then in here we can have our P, which is a paragraph. This is the content paragraph. If people are searching, uh, the, the heading bikes for sale will be looked at as the main heading for the page. And the um, paragraph will be the content. P stands for paragraph. If I refresh now, this is how it will look. So that's a paragraph, H3, H1, H2, H1. And like I said before, we can change. Let's do that now. Let's go back into our header and change the style. Apply a style to the P tag. I'm going to change its font size to... 
save. Let's just see what happens. So now the paragraph text is actually bigger than the H1 or the header text, which shouldn't be the case, but it doesn't matter because Google or whoever's indexing or looking at your, your site knows that this H1 is still classified as the heading for the page. So it's sort of like a, an, an, an identifier to say this is, where, this is the heading, the rest, this is supposed to be paragraph text, so don't take too much notice of that, but um, yeah, this is the main heading. Let's take that font size back down to say, let's set it to 18. <clears throat> I don't like that this font is um, got little curly bits on the end. So we're going to set the font family to Arial to a sans serif font, which means serif fonts have those little curly bits on the end. Sans serif is no curly bits, just straight like an Arial font. Notice that that fonts have only changed for the paragraph tag. That's because we've only put a rule in for the paragraph tag. We could put in a rule that covers all text within the body by simply putting a rule for the body. And we'll shove this aerial rule up into here. Save and then refresh. Now all the text within the body, two body tags, so everything in here will be styled or have a font family applied to it in this order. If the user doesn't have Arial installed, it'll go to Helvetica New. If it doesn't have that, it'll go to regular Helvetica. If it doesn't have that, it'll just go to a sans serif. Now, let's get rid of these two and just leave it like that for a second. Next, we're going to put in an image. How do we do that? This is how we do it. Image tag source equals, we haven't got an image yet, so let's make one. I'll just go over here, make another screenshot, and I'll put just this background in there. And I'll call this image test. Let's go back to Blue Griffin. Now this, this file, this index file is saved on the desktop. So to access this image test, all we have to do is put the name of the file there. Image test.png. If this file is in a folder, usually this, this is the case, because it's neater, um, then I would have to say it's actually in a folder images. I might leave it like that. Then you put an alt tag in saying this is just, this is a description. And then we close. That's it. Command S, Command R, and there's my image. I might change this to say below is a screenshot of a water desktop. Okay, what else do we need to do? Let's put in some links. A is the tag for inserting links. href is the uh, property to set for what file you want to link to. So it could be uh, any file, but usually it's, it's another um, HTML file, so we might go about.html. We haven't made this file yet, but we will in a second. And then the text that will appear will be that. Let's have a look. There's the about. Let's put it to the next line. So we'll put this inside of a P paragraph. That will make, ensure that it goes to the next line and, and um, puts it into its own paragraph. So there's the about, let's click on it. 
it goes to some page that is not there yet. So let's copy and paste command V this index and we'll call it rename it about refresh there we go now the problem with this is we don't have a link to go back to the index so I'm going to delete this first and in our index before I make a copy I'm going to put in another link and call it the home page except this will go to the index home save refresh now there's no gap there that's all right we'll put a gap in we will put a dash so if I click home it goes to the index if I click about it will go to the about page but now if I copy this index and I name it about the about page will be different. See about index. Let's open this about. It was on desktop. Here it is. And I want it in a tab. So here's the about. I'm going to go straight to my source. And we can change the um, heading so we can see when it, when it changes. There you go. All right, that's what else we need to do. Let's put a, uh, a mail link in. So on the about page, we want to insert an extra link that says at the bottom, let's put in a new paragraph. A H and A href. This will be a mail to uh, sales at parks.com. Just made that up. And this is an email sales. That's what we'll show. But when I click on the link, let's see what happens. I'm going to save that. Refresh. Let's go to the about. Email sales. That should open up my email. So that's what mail to links do. Let's do something else now. Let's put these now into, instead of just having them like that and doing a little dodgy thing, let's put them into a list. So let's set a list up first. I'm going to go back to my index. And let's do an OL. OL stands for ordered list. Inside of an ordered list, you have list items. So uh, we'll have maybe three. We'll have a home, which is here. We'll just copy that out. We'll have an about. And we'll have a contact. Should have called it contact. That will change that. It won't be a direct link. This will be the mail too. So I'll copy that from the from here. Save and let's go and have a look. Now we have to go back to our home. So there's our one, two, three, and makes a list. If we change this OL, I'm going to get rid of that too. If we change the OL to UL, U stands for unordered list, that will change to dot points. So it sort of does it automatically. When you're creating menus in HTML, a lot of people do this because then they can style it. We still have style options that we haven't played with yet. We can get rid of those um, style points. We can replace them with whatever we want. We can make it go horizontal instead of vertical. We can do anything. But that's the basics of that. Let's put this menu to the top. I'm going to cut that up and put it above, oops, in our body, above our uh, header. 
and then I'm just going to copy all this. No, I'm going to copy that and put it in our also in our about and get rid of the mail to link and that other those other two links. So in a refresh, I'm going to go to about and go to home. I can also contact it, which should open the email. All right. That's basically mm, nearly all you need to know so far. And there are other little things, but HTML wise, if you've got a, um, a handle on those basics, where the style goes, how to change the title, um, that's where the meta data goes in the header as well. And then all the content goes within the body tags. And then ULs are an OLs, so list types, and then H1s, and then P tags, image tags, and A tags. They are that's the foundation or the, the basics of um, HTML. And we go on to CSS. So let's have a look at that. <coughs> 